Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today I got a Zerg versus Protoss for you, versus none other than the Hunter. Whoever that is, I don't think I've actually played him before, at least not recently. Um, Zerg vs. Protoss is a pretty good matchup actually right now in Legacy of the Void. It's a ton of different options that the Protoss player can go for, but most importantly, which I personally really like, there's actually a whole lot of different options, especially in the mid game, that you can go for if you are a Zerg player. And I've been enjoying the different kinds of mid games quite significantly. Most of the time, early game, you do see Zerg players play relatively greedy. And I think I'm gonna do the exact same thing in this one. I'm gonna open up with a triple hatchery before making up the spawning pool, and that's actually totally acceptable as of late, uh, mostly because of people, you know, just simply not going for cannon rushes anymore, simply simply because you can now just knight as the opponent, they usually just end up winning the game straight up. But anyways, um, so most of the time, early game compositions will contain something like Zerklings, and then usually a bunch of Ravagers in there as well, but then in the middle part of the game, you can transition to watch a very quick Hive, you can get a quick Fort base going, you can go for Mutas, you can go for... Uh, Brute Lords, you can go for Ultras, you can even go Infester, you can stay on Ravagers, you can add a Lurker. There's a whole, done, a whole bunch of different units that you can make right now as Zerk. And that is one of those things that I personally, you know, I'm pretty excited for. I think this has the potential of actually growing into the very best matchup in StarCraft 2. Which I would actually say right now, and has always been um, Zerk vs. Terran. But um, yeah, Zerk vs. Proto is very, very good right now, as it is on the ladder. At the very least. I haven't been watching too many professional games, and the ones that I have watched um, were actually very, very exciting to see as well. But anyways, I've been playing a lot of aggressive style off of these three bases. So right now you can see I got a very quick third command, or a third command, a third hatchery going up, um, and no gas geysers whatsoever. Now what you can do, and what is completely viable at the moment, let me have a quick look, that is a cybernetic score, okay, is a Ravager Zerkling timing attack. Off of three bases. I don't know the exact specific timing for it, but I've been playing a lot more aggressive in general in this matchup. He's not actually producing anything out of the gateway, so he's not rushing out anything in particular. Um, although he is chrono boosting right now, so I think I'm gonna be sending this overload back. Don't really want to have it go down for no apparent reason. Uh, we'll go ahead and obviously make a couple of blind zerklings to defend against any kind of potential um, adept aggression, which is very, very common and the one tricky thing that we have to keep in mind here. He could actually be going for a mothership core. Actually, no Mothership Core in the main base. This is actually kind of weird at this point. We'll have to see what is going on. I may have to throw up like a, a Spine Crawler as well and knock down the rocks. I'll go ahead and do exactly that. Um, but anyways, I'll use one of the Zerklings to start scouting. But anyways, you can go for a lot of aggression off of uh, three bases. Simply if you delay the gases. And that is what I'm focusing on right now. I don't know actually if this is 100% a safe spot. We are gonna check out the front of his base just to see whether or not um, there is indeed a Nexus down. This overload may end up falling, and it is. Which is unfortunate. Not amazing. Immediate gases right here. Wow. Is this one gas in total? No, actually, three in total right now. Don't know what that exactly means. Such a quick third gas geyser is relatively uncommon and usually not the thing you do if you are a Protoss player. So it looks like. Yeah, we do end up falling there. But anyways, I'll go for a little bit of aggression. So, I'll throw down a Roach Warn right as I start up my Zerkling speed. And in the meantime, we're just focusing on making a heck of a lot of drones. The nice thing about the, the wall of this map right here is actually the fact that my opponent is not going to be able to do very much um, without, you know, hitting the Spine Crawler, which is very good. We'll get down the Roach Warn here. And I'll make sure to start up the... Um, these third gas guys are right now as well. Now, since I don't really have any kind of scouting, I am going to be throwing up a blind spore crawler, and I think I'm going to do the same over here too, just because I don't want to randomly fall to a whole bunch of, you know, uh, oracles, for example, swooping in, which is a very, very popular unit right now as of late. We're going to delay the lair, though. I'm going to start making a couple of overlords here. The idea is that I start making a whole bunch of ravagers, about eight or so in total, and see how much damage I can do if I reinforce them with a lot of Zerkling. So that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on this game as well. Zerkling speed will be done uh, once the roaches pop. So I'm starting 8 right there. We'll put them on the same hotkey group. And I'm going to follow this up with pretty much non-stop Zerklings at this point. We want to save up as much gas as possible so we can indeed morph into Ravagers. Ravagers are great because you can get them super early on into the game. And because my opponent was focusing on this much... You know, gas early. I'm thinking he's likely going to be tacking up. Now, since I haven't seen any kind of Stargate units at this point, um, this could actually be problematic. He could be going for a heck of a lot of um, 
for example, um, Immortals at this point. But it looks like my opponent is opting to go for a quick third base instead. And we can, we can pressure that a lot. Looks like he has actually gone for Phoenixes, so that's fine by me. We'll go ahead and push on. I may have to, um... I may have to go ahead and transition out of this in a little bit too. But that's fine. This is fine for us. Okay. The Mothership Core is the real culprit at this point. We can actually go ahead and just simply knock down the rocks, I think. Or uh, simply just nook down the third. Which is indeed building. Just the council on that is already very worthwhile. Trying to see how much damage I can do here. Very good. We'll get a Lair as a follow-up and just keep on making more Zerklings. We may very well be able to kill the game or kill the Protoss at this point. Only one more Photon Overcharge available for the time being. He's got a lot of extra units coming in, but... If there's no Photon Overcharge, this is quite easy just for me to clean up. Photon Overcharge and Force Wheels are the one thing that are annoying. And since he doesn't seem to really have very much of either, this is looking very nice for us. Alright, running more and more units in. We'll go ahead and get a Evo Chamber going as well. We'll actually go double Evo since we have a nice advantage. I can go ahead and drone up from here as well, but there's a big chance I'm just simply going to be able to do a heck of a lot more damage if I just simply make more units, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Gonna send a couple of the Zerklings towards the main base, and we're just trying to basically distract them at this point. Now, I think I am going to follow this up with workers, though. I'm going to start droning up right now again. It's because I don't exactly know what my opponent is doing. But put down the Hydra then here. Get Roach Speed going and... Yeah, we'll just run up. We'll just run up. I may be able to kill this base. Nah, not anymore. I think I'm a little bit too late with that. I probably could have if I tried a little better, to be honest. Definitely could have done more damage there in a total, but... This is working out just fine. So, we are getting melee upgrades. Which is okay. And we'll get some extra roaches here as well that will morph into ravages once again. Gonna get an a Overseer at this point too, just to make sure that we, you know, have detection in case my opponent is being annoying. And we'll go ahead and actually get the Hydralisk upgrade right now as well, which provides both speed and extra range for the Hydralisk. We'll push out once these upgrades finish. So if you look at the main base, we got a whole bunch of stuff coming in. It's gonna be very nice for us. We can do a second timing wave at that point then likely do crippling amounts of damage to my opponent. Get a couple more workers. Oh, we are losing a couple of... Uh... I've been using the word couple a lot in the last couple of sentences. <laughs> no, but, um, just kidding. But, um, we should be able to do a lot of damage to my opponent right when these upgrades all finish up. This is actually a little unfortunate at this point. Kind of annoying. We are gonna need enough anti-air to kill any kind of... You know, Immortals and all that sort of shenanigans as well, but mostly focus on um, sniping down the Void Race. The Phoenixes are not that big a threat. Alright, adding on some extra Hydras here, and we'll start morphing into Ravagers just to start zoning out my opponent more. Get out some extra Zerklings as well, since we are upgrading those, and I think it's time to get moving. So the rush distance between our bases is very small, which is great for me. Don't die, Queen. We don't want you dying. And we'll get a Lurker Den as a follow-up, too. Lurker Den, obviously, extremely good. Especially once you get Lurkers out, which you may have guessed. And we'll go ahead and break any kind of Force Wheels that we can find. Okay. Oh, these force boots are still being extremely annoying. Here we go. That's better. Alright. Let's nuke down this third. Very good. Once lurkers come into play, my opponent is not going to have a great day. We keep, keep, uh, keep making his army small. That's really where we shine. Although, this unit could really become an issue. Alright, nuking it down as soon as we can. Gonna split up my army just in advance here, just in case my opponent is gonna be annoying. And we'll make more Zerklings as well. The Zerklings are upgraded, keep that in mind. He's actually holding on just fine so far. It's not like we're overwhelming him, really. Protoss is very resilient still in Legacy of the Void as well. Like, they don't just go down randomly. 
Okay. That's the lurker then done. We'll make a bunch of lurkers here. Gotta keep in mind that the... The units that he has, the... Um, disruptors actually deal with this army relatively well. I wanna make sure I make a lot of zerklings at this point. And we may have to get like a spire as a follow-up too. <clears throat> but mostly zerklings right now. The thing is... Adapts and whatnot will die to my, uh, to my, um, to my lurkers. But as soon as the disruptors connect, we're in a lot of trouble. Alright, he doesn't seem to have a whole lot of them. That's the second one, though. Very nice. Now we'll just start pushing onwards. Slowly but surely bring these guys forward. And this is it. Nice. We're zoning him out very aggressively right now with the lurkers. Got a muta switch incoming as well as soon as we need to. Look at the amount of damage though that these units do. It's kind of insane. And while we are definitely are losing army here, my opponent is dwindling much faster than we are. Still has not allowed his third base to ever go up, and he ends up saying GG. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more content though, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well, so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I'll see you in the next one.